Welcome back to Hoops Lounge. Welcome, welcome. I'm Montreal Mark. Sporting Phil. We are here to talk about Steve Nash today. It was announced on Thursday that he is going to be the new GM of Canada Basketball. Thoughts? Big news. I mean, look, we're putting a big name and a real name onto an official program. Two-time. Uh, two-time, two-time MVP for those who have forgotten. Shame on you Canadians if you've forgotten that. But uh, Steve Nash, you know, a big part of basketball culture, always been a very proud Canadian. And, uh, you know, has never, hasn't never been in as many Olympics as maybe he could or should. But, you know, I think this is adding a lot of credibility to uh, Canadian basketball in our Olympic program. Well, I mean, for me, I've actually been a Steve Nash fan since around 92, 93 when he's mm-hmm. at Santa Clara. And it was 2000 in Sydney that really put him on the map because, map because he carried that team on his back. Uh, they almost got to the medal round. And... I mean, Todd McCullough was on the team, but really just a bunch of Todd kind of... McCullough, the old 76er, I remember him. But besides him, I mean, really, it was just Steve Nash in a bag of bolts, and they did it. They got really far, and to be at a position now where he's 38 years old, I mean, he was, what, 22, 23 at the time, to Young be able buck. to come back to the program and say, you yeah. know what, I'm going to carry you on a different level, mm-hmm. I think this is great for Canada basketball. Oh, that's fantastic. And I mean, it might put some, some little pressure on some other Canadians to kind of, you know, step forward and if they're young enough, play. If not, at least, you know, put the good word in, you know, just to promote the culture because, you know, compared to other basketball programs in other countries, we aren't as developed. And we have a lot of young talent coming up, so this is the perfect time to really establish ourselves. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a renaissance of Canadian basketball. I mean, we'll get into this at another time, but there are a lot of great players coming through the high school and college ranks right now, going into the pros, and of course guys like Chris, Tristan Thompson just coming up. So it's a beautiful time to be, you know, yeah. into Canadian basketball. But speaking about Steve Nash, what is he going to do next year? Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful time to be Steve Nash too, I guess, yeah. if you want to say. <laughs> he's got a great life. Uh, so he's basically said he wants to pay, play three more years, and he still wants to get paid. I mean, who doesn't? But, you know, he's still playing at a, at a high level. And at 38 years old, how many people can, uh, can argue with that? He's keeping himself in great shape. Hopefully, if he leaves Phoenix, he's not missing that training staff too much. Well, that's the thing. I mean, they have the best training staff in professional sports, basically. And, like... They're a big part of the secret to his success. And look at Grant Hill, these guys, just being able to, to thrive later in their years. Yeah. He's going to miss them when he's gone, if he goes. Yeah. No, I, I, I think there's a decent chance he's gone. I mean, we all know there's ties with his family and, and his ex there. And the to, community. I yeah, mean. and the community to Phoenix. Um, I think as a side note, I think there's a decent chance uh, Grant Hill c- kind of listens to what's happening yeah. that way. Because he's wanting a cr- contact contract as well and he's not going to demand big bucks and they're close friends so. exactly and they play really well together and maybe they'll uh, uh they'll tell whatever team they sign with to hire that training staff you know rip them out of there but um there's a couple teams that i think really could you stand to benefit um one of the obvious ones being the atlanta hawks i know we we're talking yeah. about this before that's a team with a lot of great wing athletes who lacks that that you know backcourt leadership joe johnson while being a leader on the scoring end of things isn't as much a facilitator he has that ability but it's not his game. Jeff Teague, nice young athletic point guard, but we see it's more for the shooting and defense, a little less of the orchestrating the offense. Um, uh, so I think that's a smart move. I think right away, Josh Smith becomes more relevant. Right. Al Horford gets some easy touches. Joe Johnson, the pressure's taken away, which is funny, right? Because Joe Johnson left Phoenix. Yeah, going right um, back to where it started. Yeah, yeah, and maybe realizing that Nash was the secret of success, right? Um, well, for me, I mean... I don't think it's going to happen because of Mark Cuban, but it would be great if Dirk picked up the phone in Germany this summer and said, Steve, let's give it one more try. Just one more try. Because they played so well together early in their yeah. careers. Well, I know they kind of had to separate to find their own way, but even with Jason Kidd there, oh, it'd be so much fun. Oh, you'd want them to keep both. Yeah, just somehow, just yeah? kind of, uh, Dallas, well, the old man team. Because I can see that if they let you know Kidd walk away. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think it'd be tough. I mean, I think you can definitely play in that backcourt. You know, you can play him and Kidd almost together, you yeah. know, and on the defense have Nash pick up the one, maybe Kidd at the two at this point. But I don't know if that's his... I think if Nash goes there, it's purely because, as you said, he got that phone call from Dirk, and he's like, let's show up, let's have our old uh, our old veteran team make this happen. Um, but, but there are quite a few other teams that could really use his services that, that maybe have a little more of a legit chance. Right. Is, is there like a top one that kind of tops your list there? Well, I mean, I love the idea of mentorship. Mm-hmm. And to me, if I had to pick one guy in the league who could benefit the most from learning from Steve Nash, 
Ricky Rubio. I mean, hopefully he comes back from the torn ACL. I know there's so many pieces. Would Steve Nash go to Minnesota, though? He doesn't want to play there. I mean, obviously, <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's kind of one of those off-the-driven path places, like Toronto, in a way. I hate to say that, but well, not because It's because it's, it's, it's the wrong stage of their development right yeah, now, right? Yeah. Like, I can totally see that, and I think there's a lot of value mm-hmm. in pinning, pinning him with... Uh, kind of an up and up guard. Yeah. Um, so I see there's a lot of value there. I just think that Minnesota, I think Nash, it would be a great move on his part. I think he could put up some great numbers. I think he could turn them with Rubio definitely into a playoff team. Yeah. But um, but is he going to do that? No, right? he's not going to do that. It's kind of a dream situation, you know. Yeah. But uh, Rubio's going to come into his own regardless. But I mean, we were talking, you had another team in mind in the East. Yeah, no. Uh, well, uh, a team that I thought would be interesting was actually uh, the Knicks. I know we spoke about a lot of teams, but the Knicks with Jeremy Lin. Jeremy mm-hmm. Lin, you know, he's 23, but he's still still kind of a rookie, right? You he know, is. he never really had any established playing time, big minutes. So he's coming in, and who better to run with than Steve Nash? Mm-hmm. Now, my pet peeve is I think Steve Nash meshes very well with that whole team, except for Carmelo Anthony. I know everyone out there knows I'm not the biggest Carmelo Anthony fan, but he's definitely going to slow it down. So Steve Nash, and it's the Big Apple. Does Steve Nash really want to be in New York with all this pressure at the end of his career? Maybe, but uh, but I think it's just setting himself up to failure. I, I, I think that's the sexy name going around yeah. because it makes so much sense because Amari's had the history. Mm-hmm. D'Antoni was there, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know if it makes I don't, yeah, I don't think it's going to work either, but you have to keep in mind that Steve does live in New York City in the off-season, mm-hmm. so look, for the logistical reasons, and he does live in the city, and some of his best friends live there as well, so yeah. it could work out, or, you know, Brooklyn with the Nets, well, the Nets, Well, the Nets, I feel, are kind of Duran or nothing. That's it. You know, because if they can sign Duran Williams, Steve Nash is kind of an afterthought, because you could play one at the two-guard position, mm-hmm. but then... You know, Jerron Williams, I think, would play a great two guard. But, but I don't think he would. But wants it's a little to. bit awkward, and, uh, you know, Sharon, he's too much of a good assist man being Darren Williams to do that. And Steve Nash, if Jerron Williams does not sign, would not want to be with that team. Yeah. I mean, signing a three year contract with a team that has no pieces, it's gutted, doesn't make a lot of sense. Actually, uh, one team that just uh, popped to mind, if they choose to keep Dwight, is Orlando. Yeah. That may not be yeah. the worst. Uh, uh, Orlando having the. Uh, the new uh, most improved player in Ryan Anderson with mm-hmm. Dwight Howard, uh, Steve Nash could be that one cheap piece maybe to keep him around. Yeah, I think that could work. I don't know if Steve wants to play in Orlando, but like I said, he's at a point in his career where he has no rings. He wants to play with a really dominant young player mm-hmm. and try a new challenge, I think. Mm-hmm. And I don't think a lot of people are considering this, but he may actually stay in Phoenix. One factor not getting talked a lot about is that he has three really young kids. Uh, he's divorced. He has... Uh, joint custody with his wife mm-hmm. who lives in the Phoenix area, so he may want to stay in the desert. Yeah, and she's really grown fond of the area. She yeah. doesn't really want to, you know, pick up and leave, especially, as you said, with young kids. It's mm-hmm. tough. I think there's a lot of, because uh, it's always that balance, right? Like, us as basketball hoop heads, who do we think is going to be a great fit as opposed to who as him as an individual wants to go to? Mm-hmm. So there's always that kind of back and forth, but I mean... I. Like if I if I was just speaking of talent and need, yeah, a team like Indiana. Oh God, that'd be beautiful. You got to think of the Pacers, right? You know, I'd pay uh, to see that. You know, Darren Collison, uh, George Hill, great players, but really they're off the bench guys. They're score like they don't make enough sense. Mm-hmm. Steve Nash with Granger with that whole front court would really, I think, uh, especially Paul George. I think he would ignite yeah. his career. Yeah, uh, Paul George, who you don't know, is that kind of six eight, six nine, two guard, uh, really a lot of talent and just. He's just blossoming. Uh, so, like, but, but the thing is, does he want to go to Indiana? Big mm-hmm. basketball state. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, East Coasts, but does it have the draw? I mean, it, it's it's tough to know what a guy like that really wants. I mean, if there was a team out West being, a, you know, Seattle or Vancouver, I know it's a tough spot for all of us, mm-hmm. but would he want to go there? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, what's really interesting to me mm-hmm. in the whole Nash saga is if they ever try to bring back a team to Vancouver, Seattle, right. does he does he become an ambassador for that? You yeah. know, especially after his years, does he want to become a part owner, minority owner? You know, like oh, I believe he would. Something he's already the, done that with the soccer team, the, mm-hmm. the White Caps in Vancouver, and he's very much ingrained into his, the home community in British Columbia. So absolutely, <laughs> we already. See- <laughs> That's technology for you, folks. We already see him doing that now with uh, Canada basketball, so I think he will want to get involved. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's a. So you had that one last idea with the old timer team in the East. Yeah. 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 No, I. Uh, it was the one thing. Oh, that was the one I was wanting to bring up. <laughs> the Boston Celtics. 
Um, I actually thought there was a trade to happen there. I think, you know, if he actually went to Boston as a free agent, yeah. sign a three-year deal, because as we know, Garnett and Allen are both done their deals. Yeah. And Pierce has two years left. Right. If they re-sign both Allen and Garnett mm-hmm. on, on lesser deals... You know, two, three-year deals, mm-hmm. six, seven million dollars, mm-hmm. something affordable to, to, to understand. You know, they've made their money. Like, Garnett's still making big. They both are, let's be and honest. They don't need it anyways. They, they just want to exactly. win. Exactly. They want to win. They have that mentality too. Exactly. You know? But then you have the whole argument of you have Rajon Rondo. What do you do with him? Right. But then if you can flip him into a, into a big, mm-hmm. I mean, your ideal big would be to turn, you know, him and Jeff Green into a Dwight Howard. Mm-hmm. Let's say they don't want to do that. You could go, let's say, Brooklyn swipes out at Deron Williams and they don't get him. Mm-hmm. Maybe trade those guys for Brook Lopez and then at least Brooklyn has that elite point guard in Rondo and a nice young wing in green to complement with Marshawn Brooks. Mm-hmm. And then you sit there and you're like, why would Boston do this? They're just getting older. Mm-hmm. Well, their window's closing. Yeah. And they've, they've been really up and down with Rondo. They're mm-hmm. putting up with him because he makes sense with who they have now. Right. But the thing is, how tough would a front court of Brooke Lopez, Garnett, Pierce, Allen, and Steve Nash be? A backcourt of Allen and yeah. Steve Nash? I mean, that'd be they'd have a, basically a one or two year window where they say, you know, win or win or die, basically, and they could do it. I mean, it'd be a beautiful team to watch, assuming they stay healthy. Which well, is a the huge thing is, factor. but the thing is, with that much spread out talent, right? Apart from Nash, I'd say yeah. they could almost afford for one of them to go on an injury. Yeah, it's tactical. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, let's say their best player at mm-hmm. that point, arguably Pierce. Let's say he goes down. Well, you right. still have the scoring of Brooke Lopez. Right. You still have Nash who can step it up when he right. needs to. Still have Ray Allen who has plenty of good and spring I, to step. I'm sure with those guys in the starting lineup, they'll be able to find one or two guys who just come for the league minimum and say, I want to play with oh, these exactly. guys. exactly. I mean, we always see this happen with, with the Spurs. With and these them, the Spurs, right? the Heat. Um, but I think long term, and, and this is... You know, even when all this is over, then they come out of this with a player like Brooke Lopez, right. who's been allowed to work next to Kevin Garnett to work. Cause imagine Brooke Lopez; he already has an established post game. Right. Work on his rebounding, his tenacity, and all that. Coming out of here, you're looking at an All Star center. So it's not the worst thing. Listen, I can have two to three years, mm-hmm. possibly pop off one to two rings, mm-hmm. and then then come out of this with cap room and an All Star center. And who doesn't want to play with Steve Nash? Right. Exactly. And then, I mean, as as a franchise, that's just that's just hedging your bets. Yeah. I mean, you're strong right now, and you're setting yourself up for later. Yeah. You know, like worst case, at the last year of this, mm-hmm. you're just trading these guys for for picks. Yeah. These expiring contracts. If it doesn't work, so you have all these expire. So like, you have one or two years mm-hmm. to figure out if it works. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, trade them for first rounders because people always want to shed salary, mm-hmm. especially in today's NBA, and it just makes sense. And then just uh, Brooke Lopez, at worst, he's going to stay as he is. Mm-hmm. But I think under those circumstances, with those me- those professionals, and I mean. You know, there's always the X factor. If anyone playing with Steve Nash, your your stats are going to be a little inflated. So, mm-hmm. I I think we can even stand to see even with that much talent, like a, you know, an All Star two coming out of this team. Absolutely. I mean, he, look what he did with Gortat and, and uh, Jared Dudley. These guys in Phoenix, career years they're having with him. Mm-hmm. He just makes everyone around him better. But anyways, if you're Danny Ainge, listen to what we're saying here. Bring Nash to the seas. He can go anywhere, but you know a lot of these teams make sense. Yeah. Well, look, it's East Coast. It's uh, yeah. closer to Canada, I guess. <laughs> And uh, it's, he's playing with veterans, and y- you know what? If he wants to put himself in a position to win a ring, yeah. I would argue that's about as good as any. Yeah. You know, like like it's not long term, but really he's not thinking long term. No, no. So he's he's thirty eight. I mean, he's had a degenerative back disease uh, since his early thirties, late twenties. Yeah. So he could have gone at any time. Mm-hmm. Kept great care of himself. I mean, I think he can play for three years, and he's got an opportunity yeah. to get that ring. Oh, exactly. So I think we're going to wrap it up here. Yeah, we're going to call it quits on the Steve Nash, uh, t- you know, roundtable <laughs> of sorts. But you know what? We want to bring you guys the Canadian content. Steve Nash being a very proud Canadian. We thought it was great subject matter. So. Yeah, Captain Canada. So uh, if you want to get a hold of us on Twitter, I'm Montreal Mark. Sporting Phil. We're always active on there. We have uh, Hoops Lounge on Facebook. Uh, you can like our page. And if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to get back to you or bring your ideas on a show hoopslounge at gmail.com write to us and we will get back to you we're always on during the playoffs chat with us talk to us keep in touch if you don't agree let us know yeah anything all right all right so i'll see you next time and uh keep it in the lounge see ya